Today on Takeaway Weekly, I talk about the three current Intel platforms and which one is best for you. My name is Steve Smith, this is TQA Weekly, and I'm not gonna make this show terribly long since I can spend all day talking about computers. I kid you not, especially the differences between the Intel H97, Z97, and X99 motherboard platforms, as well as the 1150 socket for Intel Haswell refresh that refers to the H97, Z97, and of course, the 2011 socket Gen 3 for the X99 boards. What I'm gonna do today is actually help you save some money and buy the correct board for your specific task by making it very easy for you. And we'll split this into two different categories. Are you an overclocker or not? If you're not an overclocker, this is for home use. You're a gamer, you don't wanna worry about anything. You just wanted it to work. All you have to do is go out to the computer store, go and see a guy like me and say, I am a gamer, I like to do office work, I play with multimedia, I'm not interested in overclocking, I want a decent board that will do the task. And if you want a decent board to do the task and you want great games, be prepared to spend more money on the graphics card because I'm gonna help you save about $150 off the H97 platform by explaining a few things. So first, par to par between H97 and Z97 boards, you can actually save about $100 because there's a bunch of things like overclocking that are not available on the H97, a bunch of these, how do we say, useless features for most of you because you won't be overclocking the boards and many of you won't be comfortable enough to do that anyway. So you're gonna be saving somewhere like 100 or 80 bucks or something for your motherboard. Now, if you're gonna be going with an H97 board, don't waste your, mind, your money buying an unlocked processor from Intel. This avails you to i3, i5, and i7 processors, as long as they're locked, and will save you about $50 on the processor itself by actually not buying something you can't use on this board anyway. And don't put it into your mind that you can possibly upgrade the board or the processor independent of the other. Most of you will never do that. You'll either change them both at the same time or keep it for a really long time. So don't make any allusions to it. If you're not comfortable today with overclocking, doesn't mean you won't be comfortable in the future with overclocking, you just might wanna make a different computer for that build in that case. Going to get yourself a computer that will work for the task you want, and you don't wanna worry about overclocking, go with the H97 platform and a locked Intel processor, which again, avails you to i3, i5, and i7. Just make sure you don't get the unlocked version and save yourself somewhere close to $150 in the process. Now, if you are a gamer and you're comfortable a bit with overclocking, you wanna experiment with it, you do some productivity, you do some video, which you can also do, by the way, on the H97 platform, you can actually go and get yourself a Z97 board and get an unlocked i5 or i7 processor. I'm telling you i5 or i7 because these are the only two that are unlockable. There is no i3 unlockable processor. And honestly, I wouldn't waste my money buying a locked processor thinking I'm gonna change the processor in the future since, like I said, nobody or almost nobody changes the processor on their board. They end up changing both at the same time. So if you're gonna buy yourself a Z97 board, buy yourself an unlocked processor because you're going to end up using it if you're even remotely interested in the idea of overclocking. So this will allow you to do some overclocking and some tweaks. Now, obviously, you can save yourself some money by going with an i5 instead of an i7 processor and allow yourself to spend more money on the graphics card itself because many of the games are now graphics card dependent. In fact, if any of your tasks have to do with the graphics card, most of the encoding will be done by the graphics card and not by the CPU itself. The only primary difference between an i5 and an i7 is technically the ability to hyperthread. That is it. So an i7 four core processor can hyperthread look like eight cores and the i5 is a quad core also, but doesn't have the ability to hyperthread. But since many of the games and programs that do video of any kind will use a graphics card, you can actually save money there and spend more of it on the graphics card and have a better experience in the first place. So by having a, a quad core instead of a quad core with hyperthreading, you get a better graphics card if your budget was fixed. At the same time, again, do not buy a locked processor. You're probably not gonna change it anyway. And if you're gonna buy an a overclockable motherboard, buy an overclockable processor. Else, 
go with the H97 platform instead. Because, like I said, you're more likely to change the motherboard and processor at the same time than just change the processor. So, that is my actual point of view and my advice to you. Now, if you are one of those high-end productivity people, like spending epic amounts of cash, or just want to be able to say, I've got the best system, then the X99 platform is the platform for you. It does not use the 1150 socket, it actually uses the 2011 Gen 3 socket that is currently available. It is currently the only platform that supports DDR4, that brand new kind of RAM that is epic expensive right now and only a few manufacturers actually produce right now, but you get access to DDR4, you get all the overclocking ability, and best of all, you get more PCI Express lanes, which means if you're the type of person who will do multi-GPU slides or crossfire, you will be able to have more channels of actual PCI Express being availed to your graphics cards to do some of the higher end video editing or even higher end gaming that you won't necessarily be able to do on the other two platforms. It will be a pretty penny more, but you will have a much stronger system. However, it does come with a catch 22. So unlike the H97 and Z97, which obviously do have fewer actual lanes for PCI Express, the X99 does have a sly issue where you actually have to tell the motherboard that the PCI Express the generation is three. Don't leave it on auto, put it up to 3.0. This will keep you from having that bizarre bug of where all your frame rates goes down to the shitters. So that is a platform for people who are in the know, who want to spend a lot more money, but want the absolute best experience out of their computer. You won't be saving money on the X99. If you wanted to save money on the X99, uh, on something that is kick-ass, you would have to go with the Z97 board. But if you're ready to spend the money, the X99 platform is for you. And again, it is the only platform currently that actually supports DDR4. So let's just recap. If you are a family, not interested in overclocking, want to buy a computer that's not too expensive, that will game. Go with the H97 platform with an 1150 Intel socketed i3, i5, or i7. If you're willing to do gaming or interested in that, at least go with an i5 or an i7. If you have a issue with spending too much money, go with an i5 when you're looking for a gaming computer and spend more money on the graphics card instead of buying an i7 and skimping on a graphics card. So keep that in mind. If you are an overclocker that has some money that you want to spend, want to start doing some experimenting, go with the Z97 board with an i5 or i7 unlocked processor because there's no point using a locked processor on these boards and you'll actually have a great experience. If money is an issue on these boards, go with an i5, you will lose hyper-threading, but you can spend more money on the graphics card, and if money is no object, the X99 is for you, currently the only platform for DDR4. So, have a great day. Don't forget to comment down below, ask me any of your questions that you want me to answer, and of course, you can always email me at ask at tqaweekly.com. Go to my website, tqaweekly.com, to interact with me and the community there, and you can always find me on Twitter, Facebook, and a whole bunch of other places. Everything is indicated at tqaweekly.com. Have a great day, and goodbye. And again, don't forget to subscribe.